Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Got a beautiful day here today. Charging up all the systems. Getting back into the beginner series. For those of you that are getting ready to make some kind of a solar system and we're kind of assuming that you're doing it for some kind of a backup in this series just to show you how we, we're going to be able to build a very small system. So I'm assuming some of you have been running around with a watt meter checking out your devices. You've decided that when the grid goes down, food is of utmost importance and maybe cooking that with a hot plate or an oven. The air fryer oven that I showed you on the previous video, as you could see, draws a fair amount of power, 1600 and some watts while it's running. A hot plate would draw a little bit less. But to continue on in this series, we'll say you've decided that you do want to keep your refrigerator going. You put the watt meter on there. Uh, and like on my refrigerator, freezer, when that's running in the cooling cycle, it draws, oh, between 50 and 70 watts of power. And let's throw something else, maybe besides having some food and a way to cook it, uh, whether you go with a hot plate or an oven, a hot plate draws a little bit less. You can get it down to, you know, maybe six, 600 watts and still cook your food. So, you know, a thousand watts less than the air fryer oven. And maybe some of you need a CPAP machine and you want to keep breathing uh, during a power outage. And those draw roughly 50 watts or so on the average. So let's take into consideration you're going to need some food storage, security, refrigeration. You want your CPAP machine to work and you want to be able to cook your food. And that can cover you until that grid gets turned back on, right? That's the idea. Okay, so for this series, I'm just gonna make some assumptions to keep the narrative alive. We've decided that you do wanna keep your refrigerator freezer going. And we know, depending on the ambient temperature, you know it draws more or less the hotter the temperature is throughout the day and how many times you're opening and closing the door it makes it work harder in in this particular model here um, and yours may vary and you can test that out with the watt meter like we showed you um, this one's 50 to 70 watts when it's cooler runs closer to 50 watts when it's running intermittently during its cycle and if you're cooking and opening and closing everything a lot and the ambient temperature is quite warm which of course this time of year it is in most places in the northern hemisphere then it'll be you know drawing a little bit higher uh, amount of power then so just figure on the higher side we'll just call it 70 watts for our purposes here and then we also threw in the uh equation of maybe some of you use a CPAP machine. I know a lot of people that do and they want to keep breathing during an emergency so that needs to stay on as well. 50-ish watts is what I've been told that those run. I've even looked it up. 30 to 60 watts is an average. Yours may vary. You may have a little battery backup for that unit as well but we're going to you know get you a little more security in this series for those things, plus a way to cook the food. And one more assumption I'm going to make is that most of you are paying attention to the news, and most of it is headlined with unprecedented, <laughs> regardless of the event, whether it's unprecedented rain, unprecedented drought, unprecedented heat, everything's unprecedented. And it's keeping everybody a little bit on edge. And when you have your small little solar system, keeping whatever is essential for you to keep running, no matter what happens, you can relax into the unprecedented times a little bit more. We all feel the tension of what's going on. No matter what walk of life, it doesn't matter. We can all feel there's a tension in the air. 
And the whole purpose of this series is to make things a little easier on you. Okay, so now that we know what you want to run, and of course, what you want to run is up to you. I'm just throwing these as ideas out there and we'll show you based on the things that in our scenario that we want to keep up and running, what can you get by with and make sure that all of that stays running. You can breathe, <laughs> you can eat, you can cook, and all the food that you've invested your hard-earned money into stays preserved until the powers that be come and turn you back on. Okay, so 70-ish watts here. Maybe you go with an induction cooktop. This has about th three settings. Yeah, three. And it's about 600 watts, 800 watts, and maybe 1,000 watts. I've cooked on it many times. I've never had to go higher than 600 watts to get a meal prepared. And that freezer there, 60-ish watts. And of course, it doesn't run all the time. Just when the temperature drops down in there, it kicks back on, so it cycles intermittently. None of these devices will run 24-7. They just need to be on to keep the temperature the way you've got it set. Uh, nice and even and steady. Now, some of you that might be on a breathing apparatus, like a CPAP machine, that's going to need to be on 24-7, but 50 watts as an average for that, not a huge deal. And for those of you that can't live without an air fryer, we know that was 1600 and some watts. So the other thing we wanna do is assume that it's possible that all of these devices need to be running at the same time sometimes when you decide to start cooking. You know, the freezer kicks on, the refrigerator kicks on. And if you were using the air fryer, maybe, you know, 1600 and some watts. So, Add it all together and we're, you know, over 1800 watts, 1850 watts, even though that's not going to be what you have to worry about running round the clock, right? Cooking is only intermittently. These things only kick on as needed. Maybe in your case, the only thing you've got running constantly is that CPAP machine, but it's not a heavy draw. Okay, so you've taken all those considerations into your account of what you want. You've been thinking about this. You've got the general concepts. Now, let's get to sizing a system to meet that 1850 watts based on the devices we're going to try and keep up and running during a power outage. And we'll assume that you, at nighttime, are going to need a couple of lights, maybe run a TV, and you'll be able to do that too. So you're going to be able to get by with a 2000 watt inverter. A charge controller such as this will work just fine. And a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery will also do just fine. And as we can see, 100% full. And while the sun is hitting those panels, the battery is already full. And when one of those devices kicks on right now, it'll open the panels back up. Now that it's 100% full, the charge controller has turned the panels off because this doesn't need any more, there's no more space to put any more energy in here. So during the day when you're at that kind of a stage, you're full, and then it's a good time to do a little cooking, you know, before the sun goes down because now you turn on your hot plate or your oven, the panels that you have hooked up to this system will open up all the way to keep this battery full. So in essence, you're drawing your power straight off the solar panels. So it keeps your battery full. And you learn to do that when you're running a little solar system. You'll start doing certain things during the day when you have a surplus of power. So you have a full tank to get you through the night. So in these demonstration purposes, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Here, this system is 100% full. You can see by that little triangle, the power is actually going down a little bit. That's because I do have uh, the refrigerator freezer tied up into here right now. 
and it's a little cloudy, so there's not great sun hitting that. But let's go ahead and cook something up on that hot plate. And then all we'll have to do is look back here at the gauge and see how much it draws down. And I've come into the refrigerator and I'm pulling out some leftover sloppy joes. And this is very, very cold. And we're going to drop it onto this induction cooktop and heat up some lunch while there is still some sun coming in on those panels. Okay, the induction cooktop plugged in, and I've got it plugged into that watt meter that I suggested you all get so you can really see how things are going. It's not drawing any power, but just being in the on position, only 1.9 watts. Let's go ahead and hook it up to about that 600 watt setting, I believe, which is a medium high on this unit. And let's start cooking. 375 degrees is what that induction cooktop is going to get to. I'm going to whip up some sloppy joes. And this is very, very cold, has been preserved overnight in a nice ice cold refrigerator, keeping my food really in good shape. So I got to press start though. <laughs> okay, it's been a while since I've used this. There we go. And you can hear it running a little bit. And let's see what it is drawing. Oh, actually I was wrong, 975 watts. Yeah, anything with a heating element has a pretty good amount of power. And, oh, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna take that temperature down a little bit. I think I'll put it on about 175 to start. That should get it closer to that 600 watts that I usually use this just for reheating food. So there we go. By just adjusting, now I'm just drawing 613.7 watts. And this won't take very long at all. And just like I was showing you on that other system, this is a good time to do things like that because there is sun hitting those panels, but you can see it's dropped it down from 100% full now to 99.6. And because drawing that kind of a load, you can hear the cooling fan come on on your inverter. But we'll get those sloppy joes popping hot uh, piping hot <laughs> and see how much it draws this down. So besides the 617 watts this hot plate is is running right now the refrigerator freezer is also running on the same system drawing about 70 watts. So we're drawing about 686 or 87 watts. Okay, so this has been running for exactly five minutes on the medium-low setting, 175 degrees. And I misspoke, there are actually six settings on this, low, medium-low, medium, medium-high, medium high, and max sear. So here we are, five minutes in, still drawing 618 watts. The refrigerator still pulling another 70 on top of that. So. 688 is what we're drawing and five minutes the great thing about this for like reheating doesn't take any time of course but even cooking these things are extremely quick so they do draw some power but i mean in five minutes as you can see it's it's ready that is bubbling hot sloppy joes they're ready i can go ahead and turn this off now I can find the off switch there. Nope, not there. <laughs> uh, okay, well, you get the idea. I'll find it. Actually, you just hit pause <laughs> to turn it off. So, and there it is back down in the standby position. So, for those six minutes of getting my lunch ready, while the sun was out, we took this from 100% full to 98.1% full, running the refrigerator and freezer and the hot plate. 
Now it was just gonna hum along at 100% full until I turned that hot plate on. But now there's enough solar that will be coming in that this will go right back up to 100% full and I'll be in great shape to run everything throughout the night. So that's why I really stress getting a, a gauge for you guys in the beginning so you can learn what you're doing, what you're using, how much it uses, uh, and this will just keep you right on track. And then the brains of the system, you know, your charge controller will definitely open back up and let the solar come back in and it'll try to drive this back up to 100%, but even if it doesn't, it's close enough. All right, so you're starting to feel a little more independent already, aren't you? You started to figure out what do you want to run? How much you're going to need to run it? You're starting to get an idea, maybe what size of system you need. It's all coming together. And 10 minutes later, you can see that little triangle to the left on that fuel gauge is going up. The panels are bringing this battery back to 100%. The main meal of the day has been cooked. So we have not even touched the system. So we're good for running everything overnight and then some. And you're starting to feel that little bit of independence feeling. So maybe now you're starting to look at what solar panels cost. And the ones that I have invested in have been fairly cheap. These were all under $100 a piece. They're 100 watt panels, so right there is 400 watts ready to go. And like I was saying before, that's your filling station. We know the batteries, the fuel tank. We're starting to get some components mixed in. We're starting to use some things. It's all starting to soak in. You're starting to feel good in these times we live in. Maybe not so vulnerable and how just a few more steps and you're going to be independent to some degree of the grid and have some security for whatever you deem necessary how you're living and where you're living so yeah we've cooked and the system's back up to full we're still keeping our food in good shape you're starting to get the idea, right? It's all starting to come together. And it's all going to come together. I've been bouncing around a little bit on these devices. We're going to get in and keep it real simple for you. And show you what you can get by with. And we're going to eventually build a system to show you exactly how easy that is. But I want all of this to start percolating for you. So, alright my friends. That is part two. <laughs> and then we got a few more parts to go and I want this series to be easy to understand I, I hope I'm doing it in a very easy to understand manner and I will keep going over some of this stuff some of it I repeat but let it percolate all right aloha we'll catch you on the next one I got to get out of the sun it's beaten down <laughs>